All right, we've got a brand new asset for all of you. We have our TDU Lego record store. This asset was created and generously donated by Terrence Teron Wilson, and we think this is a lot of fun to light. So there's a lot of cool ideas that you can do, but I don't want to give anything away. I want you guys to go crazy and light it however you see fit. But the biggest thing about this asset is it's going to be pretty small because, again, these are Legos. But in this video, I want to A, go through an overall breakdown of the set, and then B, talk a little bit about how to create depth of field within the RenderMan render engine. So you can see this setup is pretty straightforward. We have all of the objects and characters and everything all under this one general all tab. From there, we have the room, the people, the records and the wall objects. The people, once you get into there, you'll see person one, two, three, and four. And then inside each individual person, you have the waist, the hands, the arms, the torso, the legs, and the head. So pretty straightforward. You guys can dig around. You can you can play with it as you see fit and, and really go crazy with this. But now I want to show you how to create some depth of field within the renderer. There are two different RenderMan depth of field setups I'm going to show you. This first one is a little easier, but it has its limitations. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the display menu, go to heads up display, and then select object details. What that's going to do is bring up a whole bunch of information in the upper right hand corner, including distance from camera. So when you select an object, it now tells us exactly how far it is away from that camera. What we then want to do is add that information based on whatever object we want to focus on into the depth of field focal length. And that can be found inside the camera if we do the drop down of depth of field and we enter the focal distance. We just manually enter that number there. Now what we can see is that our focal distance is set to that object. So that is going to be our central focal point where everything else around it is going to be falling into a blurred region. That is going to be our depth of field or our depth of clarity. Now to control the amount of blur around that object, we're going to have the f-stop and the focal region scale. The f-stop works exactly the same as a camera. By increasing the number, we actually increase the depth of field range by making the aperture smaller, or in this case, the synthetic aperture smaller. If we make that number smaller, it makes the aperture bigger and therefore makes a much shallower depth of field, where right now we're only getting things on this parallel falling into focus. The focus region scale is not based in reality. It is a unit measurement scale that you can make bigger if you want to add more things in focus that would naturally be in focus by the f-stop setting. Now the limitation of this setup is that we have hard numbers that we're entering. So if the camera's moving, we may have to hand animate and do some different things to make sure that the focal length stays with our main hero object. Another way is to parent that focal distance of that object away from the camera to the actual focal length of the camera. So no matter where the camera and that object are, no matter how far apart they are, they will always be linked and that object will always be in focus. The way that we do that is we go into the Create tab, scroll down to Measure Tools, and create the Distance tool. We are actually going to be creating two of those, so you just click twice, once roughly around the camera and once roughly around the object that you will be positioning. Now, we wanna make sure to select the Move tool again or the Translate tool again because if you keep clicking, you'll keep creating locators. Now, you take the first locator and you give it the same world space location as your camera. I just select both of them and then enter the X value, then the Y value, then the Z value. The next step is to grab locator two and position that locator exactly where we wanna focus on, specifically right around the object. If you so choose, you can either position it using the handles here on the side of the locator, or you can enter the X, Y, Z location the same as we did with the camera. Now that we have this located on the character, we can use that distance or the distance between those two objects to drive the focal length. The way that we do that is we go into these objects and we first grab this node that was created. This is the distance dimension node and you wanna grab the shape node that's underneath it. Then we also grab the camera shape node, go into Windows, General Editors, and Connection Editor. This will allow us to connect the value of one object and have that drive the value of another object. In this case, we're going to use the distance of those two locators apart from one another to drive the focal distance of the camera. Depending on which order you selected those two, you can switch the from and to locator here at the top. Make sure not to select focal length and do focal distance. When you do that, you can see the focal distance 
value changes to a yellowish color, and that is because it is being driven by an outside force, which is exactly what we want. If you don't see that, something has gone wrong. And if you don't see the distance and focus distance, make sure you're selecting the shape nodes. And if you're not seeing the shape nodes, make sure you right click in the outliner and select shapes. Now you can see in this preview that no matter where we move the camera, where we tumble it around, the focal distance will always remain on that character and he will always stay in focus. So whether the camera is moving or static or whatever, that character will always remain in focus. So that's our little demo. Now it's up to you to download this asset and light it like crazy. We can't wait to see what you're going to create. Happy lighting.